So, I saw the FNAF movie pretty recently. It was pretty good, I guess. It was sh- So, yeah, after about, what, eight years now of waiting, we finally got it. I know I'm going to say, without going too heavy into spoilers, I think it's worth a watch if you're even the slightest bit interested in it. Oh, and the easter eggs were pretty cool, so I guess you should watch it now. Okay, so for this section of the video, I'm going to be going to spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, leave the video now or click to a certain time code in the description. So, yeah. Okay, so we got to see the spring lock scene. And uh, that kind of was a letdown. Like, I feel like they should have done more to it. Like, maybe have it being, like... They have, like, water effects him, like, in the games. It sort of implied like that. But something I was pretty happy to see, or in this case here, was the Living Tombstones FNAF 1 song being in the end credits. That was a total shock, which caught everyone that I knew off guard. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty nice. Does this mean he has the copyrights to this now? There are also a lot of special guests there as well. So, you know, good, good for them, you know? Really good for them. You know, I, I might not be in it, even though I'm just a small YouTube, but, you know, good for them, you know. Yeah, show some people. People get represented. And then, and then Matt Pat said it's fearing time and fearied everywhere. But in all serious, no, Matt Pat showing was a complete shock because literally no one thought he was going to be in the movie. But, nope, we were proven wrong. Okay, so, Mike Schmidt. So in A canon of FNAF, Mike Schmidt is an actual name of someone. Now, this could still just be Michael Afton under a false name, but yeah, it might not be. But if it was, then wouldn't it have been mentioned by now? What I will say is that if he is Michael Afton, or if it is just a guy actually called Mike Schmidt, it's nice to see them humanise the very blank slate characters, because they kind of don't really do much in the games at all. Like, when he beat up that father in the mall, that was pretty nice. While the children slash the animatronics don't exactly do much in this film, it's nice to see them. And, you know, it gives us more insight on how they sort of actually acted in the games. And the animatronics just look so good, honestly. It's like they were whipped straight out of the games and into real life. And even now, I still don't know if they're actual animatronics puppets or people in costumes but either way i'm loving it oh and a funny story one of my old friends just so happens to be in that same cinema and i think we should get their opinion on it yellow i am izzy i'd like to say that i think the fnaf movie was really good just as a film itself the amount of gore made sense for a 15 and it's a film so of course it's gonna try to appeal to most people and not just insane fnaf fans and also it's just really well made I'd say. Good camera stuff etc etc. However, I think it could have been better by one, making it longer. I'm pretty sure it was originally meant to be three hours and honestly I'd rather wait another year for the film itself to be longer and two. Mike Schmidt and Michael Afton are meant to be the same person so where is that LMAO apart from those two points I can't think of anything else so that's my review. Thanks Izzy for that. Shame we didn't know we were in the same room until the last minute. So overall, I think the movie is definitely worth a watch if you're the slightest bit interested in the film. But of course, I am aware it has its issues, such as the story being a tad bit convoluted, but this is for NAF, so that is to be expected. Anyways, see you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, which is kind of like a new series that I'm doing. And as far as I'll give this a bounce, I don't know, 6 out of 10, I guess. Mm -mm. Bye, guys.